You're listening to Bark and Wag's 15-Minute Vet Talk. Each week, your host, Polly Requa, interviews veterinarians and individuals in the pet industry from across the nation answering pet questions. Bark and Wag podcast is produced weekly for your enjoyment, and show notes can be found at BarkandWag.com under the podcast tab. That's B-A-R-K-N-W-A-G.com. Please remember to subscribe to Bark and Wag 15-Minute Vet Talk. Thank you for listening to Bark and Wag 15-Minute Vet Talk. Bark and Wag is dedicated to protecting our dogs through advocacy, education, and supporting like-minded dog lovers by selling custom pet products. Bark and Wag is excited to announce our new partnership with a Colorado hemp farm to produce a line of CBD products for your pets. Bark and Wag has CBD pet tincture available in 300, 750, 1200, and 2400 milligrams. Bark and Wag CBD is pet safe, no THC, it's made in the USA, and is CO2 extracted. Please check out Bark and Wag's website, BarkinWag.com. That is B A R K, the letter N W A G.com, to see our line of CBD and awesome merchandise. We love pooch ideas for podcasts and merchandise, so anytime send an email to Polly at BarkinWag.com with your suggestions. Welcome to Bark and Wag 15 Minute Vet Talk. I'm your host, Polly Requa. Today we're talking to Sarah from California who is a herbalist that grows cannabis. Welcome, Sarah. Hi, Polly. I love your work, and I'm so honored to be here with you today. Well, thanks for being on the podcast. I know this is a hot topic, especially since Bark and Wag started selling CBD. And so I wanted the listeners, you know, when you live in a state that legalizes marijuana or cannabis, people are more aware. And so for the states that are either new to marijuana or do not know, I wanted to have you on to talk about what a herbalist is and how you got involved. Yeah. So an herbalist is somebody who works with herbs um, in all different health fields, like as, as far as how medicine is used, like antibiotics would be treating disease. Uh, herbs can treat us and um, help our wellness, help our immunity, there's so many benefits. And so I'm also a holistic wellness coach and I use herbs in my practice, in my work. I do um, individual consultations and um, it's just a great kind of dovetail into cannabis because they're both really beneficial medicinal plants, you know, the herbs and the cannabis. So what exactly are you, you have a plot of land and then you grow it and then sell it to a manufacturer or how does that work? No, I'm actually a private grower um, here in California. Each individual has to be 21 years or older um, to grow and you can grow up to six plants on private property and it has to be hidden. So there's, I'm on a property and I grow with a couple other individuals. Um, and we don't sell, we just use uh, for our personal use, but I definitely have a lot of friends in the area who grow and sell um, medicinal cannabis to different companies um, who are, you know, creating different products now. Okay. And based on my audience, what should a pet owner look for when purchasing CBD? Yeah. Um, you know, how do, how do you, how do you make sure that it's reputable and coming from a source that there's actually CBD in the product. Yeah. So this is this is a really hot topic like you said earlier for people who don't know, this is such a great time to bring awareness to the fact that animals are at such a higher risk for accidental exposure and the idea of them having any kind of marijuana is an absolute no-no. So the first thing would be that there is a label on the bottle that you're purchasing or on the product that you're purchasing that says that there's a certificate of analysis, um, that there's no detectable THC in the product. It only has to be CBD in the product for pets. Otherwise, they can have toxicity symptoms, including um, death if they're older pets. And so we want to make sure that we definitely have no THC in the product. Definitely want to yeah, look. That, that's a big deal. Yeah, absolutely. Because it can cause seizures and tremors and 
agitation and all kinds of really uncomfortable things for a pet. And they're curious, you know, we want to make sure that we keep them out of the areas that we keep ashtrays or paraphernalia or product. Um, you know, definitely uh, cultivators of cannabis should be aware of how they're storing their products, you know, and, and even in home use, like for somebody like me, um, it's, it's not just the, the legal growers who are dealing with this, it's, it's on a whole. And we want to be really responsible because pets are part of our family. So getting back to other things to look for, um, you're going to want to look for or all organic products that don't include any pesticides, fungicides, heavy metals, because they're all toxic. And you want to stay away from anything with artificial ingredients or preservatives. Another thing that's really important is uh, CO2 extracted CBD because it's a very clean extraction. There are other methods and it's not a good idea for animals. For best absorption in the pets, you want to look for the nano size micro emulsion. Um, and that, that will say that on the bottle, it will indicate it. Yeah, so Bark and Wag, our tinctures are from, um, they're sourced locally from a farm in Boulder. And they use CO2 extraction. And then they also have, it's certified by the Colorado Department of Health and Environment. And it's also registered with the Department of Agriculture. And so I think that that's a big, I've interviewed a lot of vets because actually on a walk, <laughs> my lab who eats everything, who last weekend ate a bottle of Rimadel all the pills in, I should say, all the pills in the, in the bottle. Anyway, she got into marijuana. And when, after I went, we were on a walk and she ended up eating it. And the vet said, you know, not only do they want to pump the stomach, but they're, they don't really care whether, you know, you're smoking or doing gummies or whatever you're doing with the marijuana, but they want to make sure you're not doing anything else. So they know how to treat the dog if the dog does get into any type of marijuana. Anyway, so bottom line, it's very important to make sure that it's all certified because I know my mom has a golden retriever that is on CBD. And before Bark and Wag got into CBD, the dog just did not respond very well. And so like she had very high anxiety and was an older dog. So it would help with inflammation after long walks. So when she started using the Bark and Wag CBD, she did the same dose and like the dog was sleeping, like it <laughs> wasn't used to having real CBD. And so I think that you know, my mom was probably being scammed, you know, from someone that said, oh yeah, this has a lot of CBD in it, but it really didn't. So thank you for being on the podcast and we look forward to having you back. Thank you for listening to Bark and Wag's 15 Minute Vet Talk. If you like what you just heard, we hope you'll pass along our web address, www.barkandwag.com to your friends and other pet owners. Have a pressing question for a veterinarian? Ask your question at BarkandWag.com under the podcast tab. This has been a KFR production. Join us next time for another edition of Bark and Wag's 15-Minute Vet Talk.